Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Finn Tarp. Uh, I'm a professor at the University of Copenhagen. I was so happy to be director of UniWide for about 10 years before that. Um, but this presentation that I'm now going, this introduction that I'm now going to give, um, I'm giving on behalf of Enyuguna Ndungu, uh, who is the executive director of the ARC, uh, but who was last week uh, made uh, Minister of Finance in Kenya. Uh, so he presents his apologies. His director of research passport, a BBC Medicis passport, is stuck in the UK. Uh, so that's why they had to call in some emergency um, collaboration uh, from myself. I am associated with the ARC as chair of what is called Group A, um, so that's, that's the link. Um, this session will consist of this brief introduction, which will be elaborating a little bit on uh, the project called Growth, Poverty and Inequality, uh, GPIR, um, which is a collaborative ARC project. Um, and then, after that, uh, there will be one uh, presentation uh, by uh, Yuji Wang, who is a professor at the University of Tulsa. Um, and uh, after that, there will be a presentation by Professor Jaman Mwabu, uh, who is a professor at the uh, University of Nairobi. Uh, and then, uh, at the end, as the third presentation, uh, I will give um, a presentation on a paper that's not strictly under the GPIR um, program, uh, but which is work that has been happening under the so-called EQUAL program. But it was put in this session uh, because um, uh, actually no less than three presenters uh, had to present their apologies. So uh, I was put in as uh, a default, and I hope I can do something that will be interesting. So the GPIR project, uh, it's a project funded by NORAD, it's been executed by ARC, and it has roots back to uh, some very successful work that the ARC did in the late 90s and early 2000s on poverty, income distribution, and labor market issues in Africa. Among uh, those who work on these issues in Africa, that in many ways was a cornerstone uh, of, uh, of this work, and it included a lot of capacity building, it included a lot of uh, country-level work, um, I myself actually was responsible for interacting with the Mozambican team uh, on these issues. Um, it was a very influential project. It influenced uh, the poverty reduction strategy papers. Um, and uh, as always in research, many issues remained unresolved. Um, and over the last two decades, while poverty has in declined in Africa, um, uh, it, it hasn't really left to so big, deep impacts uh, as we would have uh, hoped for. Uh, while the poverty rate has decreased, the number of poor people has actually increased. This is pretty stark in this uh, slide here, where on the one hand, um, you can see the number of poor people projected up to 2030, and then on the other side, the projections regarding the poverty rate. But it puts um, a very important um, uh, dimension to the discussions about what's actually happening uh, with growth and uh, poverty uh, in Africa um, and obviously is an issue and we should keep here in mind Nigeria is going to be the biggest country in the world by 2050 so these are issues that are really and should be sitting at the core of the development economics profession but per capita incomes in sub-Saharan Africa they're still low you can see here how the rest of the world has gone, grown and why Sub-Saharan Africa has evolved. So in spite of the fact there has been some growth and some poverty reduction, uh, we are still talking about relatively low levels. Importantly, poverty is concentrating in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, here is a graph uh, that basically uh, shows that uh, as you move forward, uh, you will see that um, Sub-Saharan Africa is essentially going to be the region where poor people live by 2030. I'm generalizing a lot, and I know that, but it's just to bring a few messages across. But importantly, and a fact that's sometimes overlooked, it's in a, in a, it's in a small number of countries. 75% of, of all poor in Sub-Saharan Africa, they live in 12 countries. 85% of people below the poverty line live in just 17 countries. So we're talking about 
50 plus countries in sub-Saharan Africa, so that might be relevant to keep in mind. So the DPIR project essentially takes as a starting point that growth, though geographically widespread and sustained, has not really reached sufficiently the poorest sections of society. Um, so there is a need to somehow revisit the growth, poverty, and equality relationships with options for redistributive policies. And this is illustrated in this one, um, where we can sort of see the growth incident curves. And, and this, this brings this I mean, home very starkly when you uh, sort of look at uh, the period 20, uh, 2000 to 2005 and 2010 uh, to 26. The key objectives um, of the project was to use the research capacity related to this original project and then the ARC network to investigate drivers of growth and inequality in different African contexts, and then to investigate the nature of interactions between inequality and growth to measure the effects of interactions on poverty reduction at micro and macro levels. And this is across African countries uh, in general. And then also, thirdly, to investigate the dynamics of the nexus between growth, inequality, and poverty, and the determinants. And then importantly, which is something that the AERC uh, is both proud of and puts a lot of resources in, is to communicate uh, the results to policymakers in policy briefings, policy sessions, to make sure that work actually has impact. Now, let me just make an analytical point here. Uh, which is sometimes um, overlooked. I mean, and, 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 and this study is very much kind of inspired by the fact that simple cross-country extrapolations from the World Development Indicators data, they will not really reveal the underlying dynamics at individual specific country contexts. And that's very much sort of where part of the rationale uh, for this project, both the original ARC project, but also uh, this more recent project. And here I'd like to make a point which I myself uh, have been making in a number of contexts. Remember the poverty, growth, and inequality triangle. Some people call it the Iron Triangle. Bourguignon's name is associated with it. And it's often very helpful to think about the definitional relationships between poverty, growth, and inequality. However, and I really want to emphasize that, while there are underlying definitional relationships between these concepts, keep in mind that it is not really an iron rule. It can break down. So it's almost like marriages that you enter into and you have by definition the expectation that this marriage is going to last for life, but marriages sometimes breaks down under specific circumstances when the underlying assumptions don't hold. And there are underlying assumptions that sometimes don't hold. I mean, poor people may not cross the poverty line even if there's growth. If we ignore the bottom ones and don't do anything for them, there's not going to be any poverty reduction. Growth may not be proportional across components of absorption, another thing that may break down. In terms of trade effects, may lead to relative falls uh, a fall in relative to exports, which may then mean that the rule, in quote, does not stand up. And then there is mismeasurement, which is, of course, also here an important part. I should just, for a little bit of promotion of wider work here, say that quite a bit of this was actually explored um, in work that came out uh, in 2018 on growth poverty, uh, which actually explores in quite some detail uh, this uh, approach also and has actually 16 country case studies that you might also want to look at. So what's the coverage of the DPIR papers? It studies progress on poverty and efficiency of growth in reducing poverty. I've already referred to this. The growth inequality poverty nexus and the scope for redistribution policies, informality, social protection and inequality the inequality of opportunity, as we have just been hearing about, and uh, the nexus, structural change, labor markets, and inequality in Africa, and then inclusive business models and cash transfers. And then here you can see that I did not edit this out, 
um, just to make sure that you understand that we are ending up with a bit of a composite uh, session. It says here three of the papers presented. No, two of the papers uh, are there, and we've added in a third one. Here are some of the key findings. Um, some papers highlighted the interrelationships between economic growth, inequality, and poverty reductions. And, and this is very much along why, uh, or one of the reasons why I made this key point uh, about the analytics uh, that, that is underlying this. A second point, poverty reduction strategies do not necessarily respond well to the same treatment effects. So in other, other words, the same policies cannot just be used indiscriminately in different contexts. The effect of policies are uh, specific to the countries in which they're implemented. Differences, initial conditions, and endowments, they matter a lot. And then the redistribution potentials in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa could be impeded by high inequality. In other words, relating to the theme of this conference, that inequality may be hampering uh, development in a whole range of ways.